Uh, so good evening, everyone. Okay. Uh, so the today I uh, the talk the title of my uh, uh, topic is uh, called application of high intensity focused ultrasound ablation in gynecology. Okay. So I'm a professor from School of Biomedical Engineering and also the state key laboratory of ultrasound uh, engineering in medicine at the Chongqing Medical uh, University, okay? So uh, just a, a one slide, a very brief introduction about myself, okay? So my background training is cancer biology and oncology, okay? I, would, I did my postdoctoral fellowship and uh, then stayed on as a research fellow, a research uh, associate at the Sloan Memorial Sloan Kettering Cancer Center in New York City. Okay. And then I become the professor, tenure track professor at the University of Chicago and uh, from 2006 and 2012. And from then I returned to China and become the uh, 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 the Bayou professor at the Chongqing Medical University. Okay, so I'm on board of the International Society of Minimal Invasive and Virtual Surgery, and is in charge of the international academic uh, exchanges. Okay, um, so um, before I go on to my lecture, okay, I actually would ask. Uh, I, I want to put the, ask these two questions first, and I also want you to bear these two questions in your mind as I go through uh, this uh, uh, lecture, okay? Um, and uh, I hope you, uh, you will understand why I'm asking this as I go on, okay? So the first question is, how if a new option for patients suffer from infertility due to uterine uh, benign uterine diseases such as uh, uterine fibroids and adenomyosis, okay? And if the answer to this is yes, okay, and how can it be properly integrated into fertility services? So these are the two questions that I would like to pose to the doctors who from uh, the, uh, the IVF service side or from whose clinical interest is the infertility, okay? How come, how come I cannot move my slide? Oh, okay, so uh, the technology I would introduce to you, you will heard always we call it a high intensity focused ultrasound or it will be called the focused ultrasound surgery, okay? Uh, either way, okay? So uh, this is uh, uh, from the state uh, uh, of a uh, state of field report from American uh, foundation called Focus Ultrasound Foundation, okay? In 2017, the state of field report, it defines this technology as a game changer, as a transformative and as a leap forward, okay? And uh, to those of you who came to new to this field and you ask, uh, is it just the beginning or is it time to embrace it? Okay. So according to the Fields Foundation report, actually four years ago, okay. And uh, uh, at the time, it's already more than 100 indications are currently under various stage of preclinical and clinical evaluation. So I, I actually, I, you know, I need to update the slides. In the 2019 um, uh, report, this has already included 136 indications. Okay, so if I would, if you look at the, the, the bars, the color, the inserts into uh, on the left uh, lower side, it pretty much covers all disciplines of medicine. Okay, so the take home message from this slide is that we are enter a era of non-invasive medicine on the therapeutic side with high intensity focused ultrasound or ultrasound ablative surgery as the first example. Okay, so yes, it's time to embrace a new era of medicine. Okay, so what is the principle of high focus intensity ultrasound? So uh, high tumor therapeutic system, okay, uh, as shown in the bottom slides. So it converts electricity into ultrasound energy through a transducer. So the mechanism really resembles how you put a magnifying glass under the sunlight and the, the sheet or the hay, uh, hay straw underneath will be elided, okay. Uh, just at the focal point the, with the uh, uh, high intensity focus ultrasound, the temperature, the energy is much higher, okay? 
Um, so the ultrasound emitted by the transducer is focused onto the targeted tissue to confer treatment, okay? And the temperature at the focus point can rise instantaneously over 65, okay, to reach 100. So what happens is the tissue underneath, uh, it will undergo irreversible coagulative necrosis, okay? And so this is very important and, and different from um, from uh, all types of uh, treatments, such as uh, like a radiation, chemo, uh, uh, therapies, okay, which most likely would induce uh, apoptosis, okay. What Hive induce is an irreversible coagulative necrosis, okay. And also, so during the treatment, uh, the treatment effect can be monitored. Uh, um, uh, during the treatment by either ultrasound or MI guided. Okay, so it's under the gu ultrasound guidance of, or, or uh, MI guidance. And today, uh, the application I'm talking, uh, I'm introduced to you is uh, 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 using the ultrasound guided HIFU, okay? And the FUS offers a false one-time precise resection, okay? and. The, so it, why we call this a virtual knife, okay? Because it's just like the knife you have, okay, in your hands, okay? It offers one-time precise resection. Also, it's a conformal ablation, okay? So in terms of uterine fibroids adenomyosis, because it is within the uterus and uh, it had, uh, in the case of uterine fibroids, it has a clear boundary. It's not whether conformal ablation uh, can, uh, can be achieved is, uh, doesn't matter that much, but when it comes to oncology, this will become very important, okay? So this, the technology is developed uh, already can have the capacity to uh, uh, perform conformal ablation. Okay, so, so this, uh, the irreversible coagulative necrosis is caused by two effects, okay? One is called the acoustic cavitation effect, and the, mo the mostly is the thermal effect. So this is uh, uh, to just to show you the focal point is quite sharp. Okay, so it's a sharp point. And from the histology, you can see how uh, this is the the position is within the uh, six cell width. So the marcation mark is actually quite uh, 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 precise. Okay. So I will use uh, this uh, video to show how it works. System allows in vitro ultrasound to enter the body and focus on the lesion, killing only the tumor without destroying any healthy tissue. It doesn't cause a wound or the loss of blood, and patients usually make a quick recovery after treatment. So how, by a few clicks of the mouse, does a doctor finish the treatment? As an example, let's see how the treatment of uterine fibroids is accomplished in five simple steps. Step one, locate the fibroids. Unlike a laparoscope, which by hands-on operation reaches and views the fibroids, the Haifu knife uses B-scan ultrasonography to find the fibroids, including those a mere one or two centimeters in diameter. Now, B-scan probe starts to move from the left side of the womb. Good, the left border of the fibroid is shown. Then we record its coordinate, plus 30, then move the probe to detect the fibroid's right border and record its coordinate, minus 20. That's how we find a five centimeter fibroid and determine its position. Step two, make a treatment plan. A computer will help us plan out how to kill a five centimeter fibroid. This process is like cutting a potato in slices, except that it's done via a computer. Step three, contrast enhanced ultrasound. Contrast agents are injected to determine blood perfusion, to estimate the level of difficulty in treatment, and to distinguish fibroids from normal tissue for comparison with the result of post-treatment contrast enhanced ultrasound. Step four, treatment. Wait a minute before pulling the trigger, we need to make sure of four things. The proper condition of the patient, a safe acoustic pathway for ultrasound free of intestines, a safe water level and temperature. Focus the point of the Haifu knife aimed right at the target. Done. Now we can begin the treatment. Choose an appropriate degree of treatment, i.e. degree of thermal power. 
and destroy the fibroid slice by slice according to the treatment plan we made in step two. Now that the fibroid has been killed, all the patient needs is a few painkillers as well as some music and movies. And there's no need to worry about B-scan ultrasonography images because our product is equipped with both 3D magnetic resonance imaging and B-scan ultrasonography to achieve precise positioning and treatment. Step 5. Second time contrast enhanced ultrasound. Apply the contrast agents once again and we will find that the place where the fibroid once existed is no longer highlighted, which means the fibroid has been totally eradicated. That's the end of a successful operation. Isn't it easy and lovely without all the tiring procedures? Even though curing diseases is our duty, we do deserve a pat on the back from time to time. After the operation, nurse the uterus for two hours by cooling it down. Then the patient can begin having water, food, and moving around. She will be able to return to work in three days. The residual fibroid will be cleared by the immune system. The patient will be able to get pregnant three months after the operation. The high food knife means hope for patients and is an important option for doctors. To learn more about the high food knife training program, please follow us on our official WeChat account. So I hope with this short video, it has already the high oh, sorry, applied no, with FUS focused okay. ultrasound tumor therapeutic system. Okay. So with the, with the short video, okay, I think I already gave you step by step how this treatment works and what the clear advantage, few clear advantages will uh, become evident to you. Okay, the non-invasiveness, no scarless. Okay, it can be performed as a day surgery. No general anesthesia is required, so only sedation is needed, okay? And also it is delivered ex corporally, okay? So therefore, uh, not only on the past, so no scar on the skin, no scar uh, left on the organ, which is the uterus in this case, okay? Uh, so also in the uh, short video, you have already show you, uh, says that during the treatment, okay, we have already developed the, uh, the technology to, uh, so you have a dual modality uh, monitoring, okay, which will best utilize the, uh, the uh, real time, real timeness, okay, of the ultrasound, okay, and also the anatomic precision of the MRI so that, I think this is very important, okay, because not all doctors are familiar with uh, both ultrasound imaging and the MRI imaging, okay, and the develop the, so, um, uh, uh, develop of this fusion technology for the monitoring is especially important for the new doctors to learn at the beginning. So this clearly defines uh, where's the uterus, okay, where's the lesion, and where your knife moves, okay, and uh, so this, uh, it, this uh, it is already done, okay, so therefore when the, uh, okay, next one, okay, so for, as already mentioned, okay, there are two, when you heard about the MI guided high food, versus ultrasound guided HIFO. So the difference is that uh, real-time monitoring, whether you use MRI or use ultrasound, okay? So, so far, MI guided HIFO is uh, now limited and move more into the brain, okay? Where MI is absolutely required, okay? For soft tissue applications, uh, it's the U, uh, ultrasound guided high food is being more widely used for obvious reasons. Okay, uh, first of this so in this slides I gave the comparison of uh, uh, the features of MI guided high food versus ultrasound guided high food. Okay, uh, and uh, you know, pay attention to what I highlighted in the red. Okay, so in terms of treatment time, ultrasound guided high food is much shorter. And also for treatment efficiency, US uh, ultrasound guided HIFO now can reach 80 to 90% of ablation volume, okay? Versus uh, MI guided HIFO. Um, now, although it's improving, but it's limited at around the 50 or 60%. So for uterine fibroid, okay, clearly you have, if you have 40% of the, the, the lesion remaining, the recurrence, okay, it will be a problem, okay? And in also the more 
But the most importantly, in terms of the operator, okay, MI guided HIFU uh, usually is a house in the radiology department. So therefore the doctors who learn to operate this procedure, okay, perform this procedure as a radiologist, okay, versus the ultrasound guided HIFU, it can be learned by the specialist, okay, uh, such as the OB guidance. And uh, this is, you know, this is summarized. I actually borrowed this uh, slides from uh, uh, Professor Kiwi Lee from Singapore, okay? And he says, why ultrasound guided high food? Okay, if you're given a choice, first the procedure can be done by a, gy a gynecologist, the interventional radiologist or any specialist. And also the procedure is independent of the MRI machine. So the MRI facility, usually it's an essential piece of uh, core equipment uh, facility can be put for better use, okay. And also the ultrasound guided HIFU can be housed in the variety of clinical setups, such as the day surgery centers, inpatient service and clinics or medical, uh, or even um, a, uh, as a, or just a standalone uh, have a clinic, okay? So, uh, uh, and, and so far, most of the international high food centers using ultrasound guided high food, uh, the service is uh, set up as the day surgery, okay? And clearly, I just want to use this slide to show you that, okay, uh, clearly in this area, in focus ultrasound surgery, okay, uh, the Chinese team, okay, uh, has has led the development of this field since the very beginning, okay. So they produced the first machine, uh, the ultrasound guided HIFU, and then all the clinical uh, first first uh, cases global case, cases of all the different indications have been performed in China, okay? So therefore, Chinese doctors are, lead, uh, are uh, in the uh, lead of the development of this technology, uh, both on the, on the technology side, but most importantly, on the clinical implementation side. And if you, uh, for those of you, it's the first time I heard of it and you say, oh, this is, is that such a new technology? Okay, yes, it's a new to be uh, in the, pro we're in the, uh, uh, in the right, in the process of uh, lar um, more rapid adaptation right now, okay. But if you look at it, okay, there are 237 clinical centers in 29 countries and regions, okay, ha have now set up this service, okay, and uh, accumulatively, we have treated uh, uh, over 180,000 cases, among which about 90% are uterine benign diseases, which means over 160,000 cases, patients have been treated uh, with ultrasound guided uh, high fibrillation technology, okay, so uh, therefore, and uh, uh, also the, uh, what I'm going to share with you, the knowledge is actually derived from these clinical uh, cohorts and also clinical studies, okay. So for the ob uh, field, what indications has now been in cl uh, a clinical uh, 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 practice? And the uh, as I highlighted, the two most mature ones are the uterine fibroids and the adenomyosis. But this technology has also been used to treat uh, uh, cesarean scar pregnancy, placenta crita, and also ab abdominal wall uh, endometriosis. And this list is still uh, 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 increasing, okay? And so I just want to use this slide. I think, uh, you know, as in any new technology, okay, when it's first introduced, when it's passed, it's a stage of being recognized as a safe, effective uh, technology, okay? Then it's up to the specialists who learn this technology, master this new technology, and bring with their own clinical interest Okay, to think it through, how do I integrate this into my practice and uh, how can I expand it to treat the other indications? So therefore the list is increasing quite rapidly. Okay, but the, the five I listed here, we all have clinical, now if you research the literature, you can all have clinical studies to show the, uh, uh, the safety and the effectiveness of using this tech technology to treat these indications, 
Okay, but today I will going to focus on uterine fibroids and adenomyosis, which are the two indications um, uh, will call lead uh, will cause uh, in uh, fertility. Okay, and uh, so uh, so the uh, uh, using this technology, the when we choose the indications of fibroids for uh, the uh, focus ultrasound surgery, okay, is based on the fecal staging of uterine fibroids. Okay, so in uh, in the experience uh, reported, okay, type two, three, four, five, and six are indications for HIFU. Okay, so as any new technology, as any technology, okay, um, they are not there to treat all. Okay, they have indications and contraindications. Okay, and uh, so uh, from the literatures we uh, clinical experience we've been reported, it's about the especially those experience from uh, China because. Uh, um, they have the, they are most experienced in this area. About the 70 to 80 percent of the fibroids that require surgical interventions can benefit from HIFU. Okay, of course, you know, for fibroids, sometimes a patient have fibroid, multiple fibroids can have a combination of different locations. In this case, HIFU ablation is only part of the solution. Okay, and sometimes. Uh, the laparoscopic surgery, MI surgery, and the hyper surgery are both required uh, to to take uh, uh, for the treatment. Okay, so this is shows you. So this uh, high uh, is a. Uh, Hyperblation is MI-based treatment planning, okay? So before the surgery, the patients need to take the abdominal uh, MRI, okay? And then through the MI features, we'll be able to select the, uh, the, uh, uh, the criteria. So we have developed the criteria for selecting uh, the, uh, the patients who are fit for this uh, 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 new uh, treatment, okay, and uh, also post treatment uh, follow ups, okay, can also be done uh, by uh, MI, okay. So on the top panel shows you in ten months, okay, from treat pre treatment, okay, and uh, uh, to ten months the evolution absorption of the lesion and the, the evolution of the uterus, and the, you can see uh, the restoration of the. Uh, the sh not only the shape of the uterus, okay, but also the function of the uterus, okay. So we always joke that you know when the first black hole uh, photos were pop were were uh, 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 put online, we we joked and said, oh, we saw black hole all the time, okay. So that's why, okay. So uh, if it's successfully treated, okay, the lack of uh, perfusion will appear, treated area will appear as the black hole, okay? So in the bottom two panels, okay? And so this is shows you pre-treatment and one day post-treatment. So in this case, you see how beautiful is the, 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 the boundary, the edge, okay? So in this case, over 90% uh, of the fibroids were uh, treated, okay? And in the study uh, I read, okay, the average absorption rate annually, it's around this, about 67 to 70%, okay? So obviously, it the, the more complete is the ablation. Okay, uh, the better the uh, the less the recurrence is there. Okay, especially in terms of the uh, the multiple fibroids. But again, the, you have to balance out the learning curve of the doctor. Okay, and the completeness of the treatment. And uh, uh, and also the long term effect you desire. Okay, so these are the things that have to be balanced out. But the good thing is that uh, e uh, in multiple fibroids, even it recurs. Okay, and you can uh, treat it again because it's a scarless and uh, you know it's a, um, a non invasiveness. And uh, uh, so here, this shows you yes. The, actually, the size doesn't really matter that much, okay? So this technology can be used to treat single uterine fibroids, okay? And also uh, to treat multiple fibroids, okay? And I, and I think for the multiple fibroids, especially the large multiple fibroids, okay? And for those of the doctors who are on the fertility, uh, who are doing IVF service, okay? You must meet patients 
who suffer from big multiple fibroids. I think uh, probably Olaric will also agree that when you see the uh, multiple fibroids to this size and this patient that has fertility needs, it's also a challenge for the MIS uh, uh, doctors, okay? But uh, uh, based on the, as I said, based on the fecal staging, based on the criteria we developed for the uh, MI, uh, uh, selection, okay, if you follow these uh, quite uh, well, then the patients will pretty much you can predict, okay, uh, the uh, treatment the outcome, okay, for uh, the patients, okay, and uh, to show you, okay, so those of you, you know, the uterine fibroids, the, pre the prevalence is very high in African women, okay, and uh, so these, this is the pictures provided by the IFU Center from South Africa, okay? And from the South Africa experience and the papers they publish, we got to know that actually size doesn't matter. What matters more is whether the fibroids have a hypogenic uh, the, the, uh, uh, feature uh, on the when you we visualize on the MRI, okay. So and also they reported the South African Center reported the pregnancy and uh, even the twins, okay. And uh, so the fibroids there are all very big. You almost don't have a small fibroids there, okay. And uh, uh, I want to bring to your attention to this study, okay? So this, this is the landmark study, okay? Later on, I'm gonna talk about the multiple, uh, the, the guidelines. So this technology has been entered several guidelines, including the NICE guideline. And this is a landmark study. Mo uh, quite a few of the guidelines has based upon, okay? So this is the study worth your attention, okay? Uh, to, to tell you, so this is a perspective study. This study is designed by the Oxford Center, Clinical uh, Trial Center, and led by the academician, also is the number one man in ob in China, Professor Jinghe, uh, Lang Jinghe, okay? And this study for, is the Oxford design and did not follow a traditional uh, phase one, three, two, three uh, RCT design, okay? Uh, rather, it followed a new clinical uh, surgical trial scheme called IDEO framework. Okay, and uh, <clears throat> so it, it, unlike uh, uh, the the other trials, okay, so in this trial, it synergized twenty uh, uh, clinical centers. Okay, so it's a twenty center study. Okay, and also has a quantitative. Build, uh, build in the learning curve measure, okay, to assess whether the, 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 how easy this technology can be set up in a different uh, clinical settings, okay, and how easy for the doctors uh, uh, can learn this technology. So uh, uh, I inquired about the actual study from Professor Long. Okay, he told me that 24 centers applied for the study. 20 was included because the other four centers, the operator the, did not uh, 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 met the past the learning curve. Okay, so the learning curve is 80% uh, ablation of uh, uh, five uterine fibroids uh, around the five centimeter. Okay, <clears throat> so so this uh, study. So I will share with you the key findings. So this is study uh, enlisted the two thousand four hundred patients. Okay, so designed in the separate uh, divided into two arms: the HIFU group and the, the surgery group. Okay, so it's a balanced design and the surgery group. It further divided. Uh, into the myomectomy group and the hysterectomy group, okay? And uh, <clears throat> so uh, this is the trial scheme. And uh, uh, this study, the 20 center study reported the six months and the 12 months, okay? And I knew uh, the, uh, I think there are going to be more publications coming out from this group because this study has been followed up into the fifth month, okay? I think uh, 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 the follow-up publications will involve the most important question, the recurrence, okay, uh, after HIFU and uh, compare with the, especially the myomectomy group, okay? From the peak of the data, I was told that the recurrence rate 
uh, of after HIFU in this study, okay, actually is better than mimectomy, okay. Uh, so uh, we are looking for, we're waiting for those uh, publications to be, uh, data to be released in, in the publication, okay. Uh, so the adverse effect, account, this study uh, compared the adverse effect uh, of the three uh, uh, different treatment method, okay. I just brought your attention uh, to the major adverse effect, okay. So compare with the surgery group and the, also the mimectomy group, okay. The major uh, adverse reaction rate is around the 10% to 12%, and uh, and the C uh, uh, the, in the HIFU group, okay. So the major adverse event rate is as low as 0.2%, okay. So remember this, okay, 0.2%, uh, because later on I will show you two other large cohort studies. Uh, uh, you will see uh, whether it's in the retrospective design or uh, this or in the perspective design, okay, the, re re the regarding the safety profile, they are quite consistent, okay. So, so the conclusion derived from this study is that uh, HIFU is a safe and effective and uh, affords speed recovery, okay? So just as showing the video, the patients pretty much can resume their normal activity within two to three days. In another words, in the, if a patient came for a weekend surgery, Monday, she's back to work, okay? And uh, so uh, the, uh, the conclusion derived from this study is that the short-term outcome of HIFU uh, appears better than that surgery, okay? So this study established the safety profile and also the effectiveness um, by comparing with the myomectomy and also uh, uh, hysterectomy, okay? Um, and the, also in the, when this paper was uh, released, the publication, I found a, a couple of commentaries, okay? And they uh, 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 follow up uh, commentaries, okay? Such as this uh, commentary says, you know, uh, HIFU will potentially add a novel dimension, um, uh, especially for the patients with the fertility leads, okay? And in terms of adenomyosis, okay, and also uh, uh, this technology first being uh, 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 applied to uh, treat uh, uterine fibroids and, uh, and uh, later on, okay, as the technology becomes more and more mature and more doctors learned this technology, okay, and they began to treat adenomyosis, okay, which requires uh, uh, more skills than the fibroids, okay. So the fibroids is the learning curve. Okay. And again, uh, actually, you know, there's one slide missing today. I couldn't find the slides. Uh, we, the, just like uh, the uh, fibroids, okay. Um, how uh, the, in, in terms of uh, adenomyosis, the selection of uh, my adenomyosis is also be, can be, it's based on the MI classification, okay. So, uh, uh, some of you probably are aware the Japanese group published the MRI staging uh, a classification of adenomyosis. Okay, and uh, based on that uh, classification uh, and uh, uh, combine our clinical experience uh, with using this technology to treat uh, adenomyosis patients. Okay, and uh, the Chinese group, the Chongqing Haifu uh, uh, Medical University group, uh, has uh, developed the. Uh, the uh, clinical selection criteria, okay, also for adenomyosis, okay, and uh, I, I, I think there's a, you will see a publication soon, okay, so as is shown here, okay, this shows you the uh, pre-treatment, okay, and after treatment of the adenomyosis, and this one is the posterior uh, diffuse the adenomyosis, okay, again, uh, this can uh, be used to treat this, uh, focus the uh, adenomyosis and also more importantly diffuse the adenomyosis okay and for the uh, I remember when I uh, went to um, in UK okay uh, to uh, for uh, the sign uh, to uh, give a uh, to attend the meeting okay the MI surgeons um, told me that okay so the, how difficult, what's the challenge they are facing with the treating adenomyosis. And, uh, and uh, they told me that if 
this technology can be used for the treatment of adenomyosis, they say for them, you know, uterine fibers, they, you might still have other options, but uh, adenomyosis, especially diffuse adenomyosis, okay, and uh, it is a challenge, okay. And uh, so I'm happily to report to you that from um, the, uh, the literature I read, also the clinical experience I have, where this technology has a unique advantage of, of, of treating adenomyosis and for the doctors from the fertility side, okay? And I think the, the, the patients suffer from infertility in among the adenomyosis patients are higher than, or, than the uterine fibroids. And uh, so again, okay, this is also MI-based treatment planning. And so here shows you uh, the evolution of uh, adenomyosis patient being treated uh, 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 before the one day and the four months, okay. okay. And uh, um, if for those of you, if it's the first time you heard about this technology, as any uh, doctor, okay, responsible doctor, okay, the first thing is not about whether it works, it's about how safe, whether this technology has already established a, a favorable safety profile, okay. So I will, you, I'll share with you three studies, okay. One you have already heard is the 20 center study. So the major complication rate reported there in the perspective of design compared with surgery and the uh, uh, surgery uh, is 0.2% versus 10%, okay? And uh, so here, the first uh, study I brought your attention is a 10 center retrospective study, okay? And this involves, an, uh, we call the 998, I call it the 9988 case study. So this is reported by the Chinese team, Chongqing, actually Chongqing Medical University team, okay? So they pull out, they did the, the, this retrospective study, 10 center, and looking at the data from 2006 to 2013, okay? Um, so this is the spread out. And I also will bring to your attention that from 2006, uh, to the 13, you will see uh, just from the split of the uterine fibroids adenomyosis, okay, a case number. So it's a, a, it's a, most of the cases are from the uterine fibroids, okay, but already about 25% is from adenomyosis. So then uh, some cases from the, the other indications that I mentioned. And again, we use the SRI classification uh, um, uh, to measure the um, uh, complications, okay? Uh, so again, bring your attention to the C and D, which is the major complication rate, just as reported in uh, the uh, uh, 20 center study, okay? Um, it's very, it's also very low, okay? It's at the 0.02%, okay? And uh, uh, the, uh, the second study I want to share with you is a retrospective analysis. Uh, and this case cohort, I call the two, so this involves 27,000 uh, cases, okay? So the case number is 27,000, okay? And if you look at the, uh, I again brought your attention to the uh, different indications, okay? So you will see uh, the increasing number of adenomyosis. Okay, actually, uh, I did an inquiry about uh, uh, Chongqing Haifu's uh, international centers, okay, and those centers, and it seems there's a trend, you know, when the service was set up at the uh, beginning, it, it's mostly the fibroids patients. But once this technology becomes a low, become adapted to, to the local uh, clinical environment, it means the doctors have uh, 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 skillfully can perform this uh, uh, procedure the the in the increase in adenomyosis patients are, are are greatly okay. So this from this the split of the indication, you also see that okay, more and more adenomyosis patients has been uh, treated in this study. Over seven thousand cases okay are involved okay. So this report is uh, from nineteen centers in uh, from China. So these are all Chinese studies okay. And uh, because outside China, I don't think they have uh, as large a case cohorts uh, as uh, uh, you, uh, you can do the retrospective study. So this 
Remember the last one I shared with you, so 2006 to 2013. Uh, so this is to from 2011 to 2017, okay? So there's a bit of overlap, but it's more it's a more recent, okay? But the trend is the same, okay? Again, if we look at the class C and the class D, uh, um, uh, uh, major complications, okay? It, it's very consistent with the 20 center perspective study. Uh, 20 pencils uh, study is around 0.2%, okay? So this is a 0.3%, okay? And if you look at the class C, it's the skin burn, okay? So the, 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 the on uh, what is listed, okay? You readily appreciate that actually, although they classified as a major complication, but the uh, URI does not require the hospital stay, okay? To, to deal with it, okay? Uh, again, so uh, I also included here, just to refresh your memory, okay? So this is a 0.2%, okay? So this is in the perspective design, okay? Um, and I think also for, those of you who first, uh, who just uh, uh, are just aware of this technology, you ask, said, you know, as a, as a doctor, okay, uh, yes, you just, uh, this, it looks like the safety profile is, is pretty good, okay, and in, in a certain ways, it looks uh, superior uh, than uh, the state of art uh, uh, surgical, uh, other surgical approaches, okay. And I think another indicator, at least from my perspective, to evaluate a new technology is, a, is, a, is the guideline, okay. Uh, doesn't mean, okay, uh, technology not, uh, has not entered the guideline, uh, can, uh, it is uh, uh, not good, okay, it's, but it signifies its maturity, okay. Mm -hmm. Uh, so I, in this part, I will share with you what I find, I, what I summarize for you, okay, in terms of, uh, okay, so the most recent is, uh, uh, oh, so, okay, so in this uh, um, New England article, that's where they define uh, uh, Elizabeth Stewart, okay, actually it's the first time, a uh, first person who call high intensity focused ultrasound ablation as a focused ultrasound surgery, okay. Huh? So the newest the guideline is the UK is so the nice uh, clinical guideline uh, recommendation for including ultrasound guided high intensity focus ultrasound for symptomatic uterine fibroids. Okay, so this approval or recommendation is is a, a evidence based okay evaluation, and then the COGA okay 2017 COGA. Uh, 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 refresh it, it's a uh, um, uh, guideline, okay, and uh, you uh, put a, uh, FUS into the uh, fibroid management, okay. And uh, actually, you know, as early as 2008, okay, and uh, you, uh, this is the uh, US has already approved MI guided HIFU as part of the fibroid management, okay. And in 2015, Canada also uh, uh, included AMA guided HIFU for the fibroid management. Okay, in South Korea, okay, South Korea has uh, 21 uh, uh, centers, private centers set up using, uh, uh, using ultrasound guided HIFU technology. Okay, and so 2016, um, uh, KSOG, also uh, uh, put uh, MI, both MI guided HIFU and ultrasound guided HIFU uh, for in their guideline for fibroid management. Okay, so so these are the guidelines uh, has already uh, uh, included the, this technology for fibroids and adenomyosis. And I think the Chinese uh, uh, guideline for this technology uh, for the treatment of adenomyosis it's already published in Chinese. I think now they are going to publish in uh, the English version is going to come out, okay. And the, uh, in the, uh, this uh, uh, last part, okay, what I want to share you 
is the outcome of pregnancy, okay? So this is an organ pre preservation technology, just as, a, as the MIS technology and other minimal invasive technology, okay? So more and more technology have been developed to preserve the organ, okay? Uh, such as the uterus, okay? So after we preserve the organ, the questions we ask is, uh, is that by preserving the organ, have we um, restore the function of the organ, okay? And so I think for uterus, the outcome of pregnancy is a good measure, okay? So I will share with you some of the uh, studies, okay? Um, you know, first to uh, report to you that um, more than 2,000, they call the HIFU babies, okay? Why they, I inquired why they call the HIFU babies? Because these are the babies born to the mothers who suffer from uh, infertility before they receive HIFU treatment, okay? So it is this treatment uh, real uh, make me them realize their dream of becoming a mother. Okay, so one mother said, "These are this my baby is the HIFU baby." Okay, then you know the, they got the name of HIFU babies. Okay, and from these uh, 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 HIFU babies, okay, it appears that they all the mother has all all had a normal, rather normal course of pregnancy, okay? And there's not even one single case, incidence of uterine rupture, which is obvious because there's no scar and no lesion uh, on the uh, left on the uterus, okay? And uh, in this study published by the Korean group, okay? So they measure the, uh, the ovarian function, okay? Uh, uh, using the indicator of AMH level before and after uh, uh, HIFU ablative uh, treatment, ablation treatment, okay? So they found that the treatment does not affect the ovarian function, okay? And uh, this is the study, okay, uh, prof uh, reported by the Chongqing, Haifu, uh, Chongqing University, uh, Medical University group, okay? So this is, uh, in, uh, I think, from the of unintended pregnancy. So the study so far, okay, let me first clarify. There's no prospective study has been done yet to evaluate the clinical or uh, the pregnancy outcome of HIFU. So this piece of evidence is lacking, okay? And so what I'm sharing with you are the uh, clinical observations, such as the half of babies, okay? And the few of the studies uh, are the uh, retrospective study, but pregnancy is not uh, the, the outcome, uh, uh, the, the indicator for this uh, uh, study, okay? So therefore, it's an unintended pregnancy. Actually, at the beginning, when these studies were started, because of the, uh, the effect of uh, uh, on, uh, on pregnancy is not uh, on, uh, if pregnancy is not certain. So um, at the beginning, uh, those women who intend to have become pregnant were excluded from the study, okay? So actually these are the intended. So uh, as this study reported, okay, 435 patients were treated with HIFU. 13 unplanned pregnancies occurred within one year of the treatment. 27 undergo C-section, 11 vaginal delivery, okay? And the, the conceiving time is between one month and the 19 months. And to remind you that these, uh, most of the studies, I, uh, information I share with you derive from reported uh, uh, natural pregnancy, okay? And uh, uh, so the IVF, the assisted pregnancy uh, is not reported, okay? And 17 patients have a history of uh, infertility. And uh, this, is a, this is a study, okay, from Chongqing Haifu Hospital, okay. So uh, in this cohort, 17 patients uh, were conceived after uh, Haifu and 71 live, uh, live uh, uh, births, okay. So the, uh, and the, in this study, they look at, so they look at the pregnancy approach. So you can see that the 74 natural pregnancy and assisted, these have four assisted pregnancy, okay? And uh, uh, it also the 
uh, the live, so the live birth is uh, uh, 71. At the time when this was reported, the five, five patients are, uh, are pregnant, okay? If you look at the, the delivery, okay, you will notice that it appears that the cesarean section out we out with the vaginal delivery, okay? And this is not because um, the, this is due to the medical practice. So at the time, that period of time, a Chinese woman prefers the cesarean section. So, so the cesarean rate, uh, section rate is uh, particularly high. Okay, now I think it's, uh, it's going down, okay? So it's not due to uh, uh, the treatment that it really requires uh, that uh, cesarean uh, 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 delivery, okay? And uh, so uh, also, so this is a center uh, the Spanish center also using uh, ultrasound guided technology. Okay, so they, uh, re in one of their uh, 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 presentations, okay, they showed uh, they have a 70 from 2008 uh, to 2018, they have 71 pregnancies, okay. So from here, and the 43 live births. So if you look at the here, the vaginal delivery or cesarean direction is more balanced, okay? And uh, so uh, with this uh, brief introduction, I think the whole take home messages for those of you who, uh, who is the first time you heard about this technology that HIV ablation is a safe and effective non-invasive option for uterine fibroids adenomyosis management, okay? And the clinical observations and preliminary clinical studies evidence, and uh, so far we only have retrospective uh, clinical study evidence show improved fertility after HIV ablation and reduce the waiting time, okay? So now, so I think the waiting period of time after MI surgery is probably varies, okay? But for the HIV ablative surgery, okay, uh, now the waiting uh, for those women who have natural fertility, natural uh, pregnancy uh, needs, okay? Um, they've been told that they can uh, get ready to become pregnant after three months of the, uh, the, the procedure, okay? So the question and answer, okay? So yes, we established the, the safety profile, the effectiveness, okay? But uh, in, uh, uh, in terms of, the, these are the scientific questions, and these are all the clinical questions, okay? The questions are, I think, not limited to three, but these three are focused on the fertility, okay? So when we, uh, in which way HIFU improves fertility? We don't exactly know, okay? And how to probably, if, if from the evidence I show you, okay, it appears that this is a new option for patients with uh, suffer from infertility due to uterine fibroids and adenomyosis. But uh, if it can be helpful, how to properly integrate HIFU into fertility service especially those, okay, and some, what I share with you are the natural pregnancies, but some of the women can uh, already uh, uh, go for the IVF service, okay, and how can this technology uh, be used to benefit IVF patients, okay? And also another question we need to answer is that does the current, current treatment protocol uh, uh, is uh, have been optimized for patients with fertility needs, okay? So we don't have answers to this question yet. I think the interest, uh, your interest and the particip uh, participation are the answer to these questions, okay? So to finish my uh, lecture, okay, I want to share with you these quotes, two quotes, I, I like very much, okay. So the first quotes are from Sir William Os uh, Osler, the founder of modern medicine, okay. And uh, so he says, diseases that harm requires the therapies that harm less, okay. And also uh, from uh, Chongqing Hive Medical, okay. Um, you know, sometimes when I introduce this technology around the global, 
okay, the doctors from the West side always, uh, Western side always ask me, say, in this field, how come is the Chinese led the development of this technology? I said, you know, these are a group of doctors from what I know, they develop this technology they are for the doctors and for the patients, okay? So the core belief of Chongqing Health Medical, this quote I also very, like very much is the core, is the treatment minimize harm to patients, okay? And so this is, uh, to finish my talk, this is the beautiful uh, uh, city, okay? Which uh, uh, I'm very happy that uh, uh, I now live, okay, so it's one of the six largest city in uh, China, and it's a beautiful mountain city, okay, I think the Dr. Ping will share with you her visit, okay, she will show you more photos, so during one month's training, she, refused, uh, she received it in Chongqing, okay, uh, and uh, thank you very much for your time and for your attention, okay, thank you, thank you all, Eric.